What is up my Pika crew? This is the Pika Woo and welcome to my third SOS video. So for those who have just recently subscribed, hi, you probably don't know what this is, but I'll explain it in a nutshell. Basically it is a series where I choose someone who I think is undersubbed and underappreciated and I showcase their content on my channel to hopefully get them more exposure. So today I'll be showcasing the channel EW Network, the Etika World Network. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check him out. You'll definitely love his content guaranteed, so be sure to support him and subscribe. The guy who mainly runs his channel is a guy you might recognize. He's kind of famous on TV, his name is Will Smith. Yep, it's Will Smith doing Pokemon, but all jokes aside, he actually looks like Will Smith and his channel has amazing quality, as you'll see during this video. He has a variety of material on his channel, from skits to reviews to the best stuff out there which is the Pokemon battles, and all of his Pokemon battles are picture in picture. Plus, like I said, he looks like Will Smith, so you gotta subscribe to him. And yeah, I'll keep this introduction short because Etika himself will introduce more about his channel and about his future plans. So I hope you guys show him some support, enjoy the video, and together we can help make his channel grow. So enjoy! Thank you for that warm introduction, Pikawu. I really do appreciate it. He's an awesome guy, and if you haven't subscribed by now, then you're a dumbass. But anyways, hello, I'm Etika, to the Pikawu subscribers, of course, and I'm here representing the Etika World Network, which is my channel that I also run with a few close friends of mine, and it's basically a channel which started off as a Pokemon channel, but now we've grown into a bunch of other things as well. But just giving you guys a pretty brief history of what we came from, basically. I got into Pokemon around about third gen in terms of competitive battling, Started uploading battles in 4th gen, Heart Gold Soul Silver, started uploading battles underneath the name TR1 Iceman, and then after that, upgraded to the Etika World Network. We were actually featured on the main Pokemon Mosh Pit channel, where we did apply for a director position, but we did get denied. So we basically did a whole revamp, did everything to make the channel brand new, HD quality, you know, made everything look nice. So now we're back, and the people who has seen us is fitting for SOS video. So once again, I do say thank you very much for that opportunity. I greatly appreciate it. But anyways, now, specifics of the channel, we do a lot of things, basically, as you heard Pikaboo mention in the introduction. I mean, like, for example, by the way, also, I have the details of this whole thing on my phone, so I apologize if I'm not giving you the eye contact that you would need. But anyways, we do a wide variety of things on the EWN, which is the Etika World Network. We do product reviews, Pokemon battles, news reports, music videos, life hacks, live updates, enlightenment videos, rap battles, relationship advice, game playthroughs, pretty much it's a huge clusterfuck of many different categories of videos that YouTubers like to watch all combined into one channel. So it's a little bit of a wild idea, but it's been working out well so far. The main goal, like the long-term goal of the channel, is to be able to make a huge network where other smaller YouTubers who need some shine but and have really good potential but just don't have that exposure can come to the Etika World Network and get ex some exposure. You know, it's kind of like the Pokemon Mosh channel in a way. That's the way I want to make it. So this way, people who have skills in many categories can come to the channel and I can broadcast that for them and you know give them a little bit of a boost in a way similar to what the people was doing for me right now so that's basically my channel in a nutshell now in terms of the policies that we take on here um, in terms of Pokemon all of our battles are picture in picture and the exact quality that you're seeing right now so picture in picture is the main thing I love that it's a lot more interactive I get to be a little bit closer to you guys so I mean that's the way things are done also everything is super HD cinematic 24 frames per second widescreen everything is massively just massively professional looking that's the exact thing I wanted when I was going for the EW one as you can see the video was in check the audio was in check everything is good also all production work all graphics all logos all intros anything that you see which has anything regardless of colors whatever it's all created by me I created everything from the ground up all the way for the Etika World Network so that makes it a little bit easier to do things as well because we don't have to rely on different things from different people instead it all comes from me so there will always be content and I think I pretty much covered everything in a nutshell. I rambled on for like 18 hours, so I mean, I do apologize if you're still here and you're wondering when is this tall guy who looks like Will Smith gonna stop talking. But I just wanted to give you guys a really brief synopsis of the channel. And if you do feel the style that I have and the whole feel of the Attica World Network, then please come on by and give us a try. I guarantee you that we will have you satisfied. We cover a whole lot of things and not just Pokemon, even though we do have that covered. But anyways, now enough of that crap. We're going straight to the battle. The Pokemon battle that we have 
have today is one hell of a match. Peekaboo, I saved this one for you because I figured this one would be a grand one to showcase on your channel. It demonstrates both player skill really well, and not only that, but I had a lot of fun with it as well. Um, this battle specifically, my friends, is against someone who goes by the name of... Yes, apologies. Like I said, it's all on the phone, as you guys can see. So, I mean, that's... But, yeah, so his name is Sinister24, and I met him in the Small Gun Wi-Fi Battle Finder. He was a really cool guy. It was really late, so he was like, hey, man, let's have a battle. And I was like, sure. But that's pretty much who it's against. Um, before I get into that, though, I'm actually here at Ground Zero. Anyway, so, now, going into the team preview, as you can see here, he has a rain team, and it's going to be one hell of a fight, because automatically, he's carrying some heavy, heavy-duty threats on here. He's got the Politoed, which most likely could be choice in a way. I've seen those Choice Scarf Politoeds, and they are not easy to deal with, because they're running around with that Hydro Pump, with the Stab, and it's just a crazy thing to deal with. And then you have the Dragonite, which, of course, is going to be special-based, so that makes things a little bit easier for me to deduce here, because he's not exactly going to be carrying physical moves, and he isn't going to be carrying a fire punch in the rain so it's going to be a special dragonite next thing we have is the fortress and of course it's going to be able to be a little bit longer the resisting in the game since this guy is not going to have to worry about fire moves too much so that'll definitely be a setup so i have to make sure i get in there and stop that the cloister you know what all these pokemon here in general all had their niches made for them they all have a title in what they do because they do it the best except for maybe lantern but lantern is still cool too i mean it resists bolt beam that's for sure anyway so now, as you guys are looking at my team, uh, it's a little bit diverse. Well, diverse, whatever the hell you want to call it. I have my Gyarados here, which is actually a special defensive max HP, thunder waving, taunting, roaring, aqua tailing set. People say put the waterfall over the aqua tail. I say suck my cock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know if they like cursing on here, but I just popped one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, next that we have is my Weavile, which is, of course is the Revenge Cleanup Sweeper that you all know it to be from 4th Gen. Next thing you know, we have my beautiful Nidoqueen, which is named Virgo. It's actually a Sheer Force Life Orb set and carries Bolt Beam, uh, Flamethrower, and with Earth Power. I mean, it's a totally offensive set. Some people think it's set up. It's not. Next thing we have is my Dredagon, which is actually Sheer Force Life Orb as well, but he carries Stealth Rocks. Um, also carries the Fire Punch, the Thunder Punch, and the Glare. So, I mean, it pretty much helps to slow other Pokemon down. And he has max HP and max attack. And he has decent defenses, so he's able to take a hit really well. Next thing we have is my Sigalith was Bermuda, Calm Mind, Air Slash, um... Calm Mind, Air Slash, Roost, and some other move. Oh yeah, Psycho Shift with the Burn. So, I mean, it works pretty well. The main goal of this team is to slow down his physical threats and to also cripple them. So this way, well... Either one. Either one works out well for me because, as you can see, I have a real big wall breaker team. Finally, my Escavalier, who is extremely bulky, can take many hits and re-dish out that damage with no issues at all. So, you know what? I've gone on and on. Let's get into the battle. And also, speaking of which, in terms of Pokemon philosophy on my channel, we play to have fun. Sure, winning is great too, but I play to have a good match. You see, it doesn't matter to me who the hell wins or loses, but rather how good the game is. I love a good game over a win any day. I mean, this game is deeply embedded in my heart. So what makes me happy is actually just getting in there, having a match, duking it out, and just... Ah, it's craziness, man. But anyways, I'm going to stop wasting you guys' time if you're still with this video. And I'm going to go straight into the match. As I said, it was against somebody named Sinister24. So... Starting the battle right now, seeing as how my Gyarados in general is just a really good lead, he can stop his fortress from setting up Stealth Rock, so that's why I sent him in there. And his fortress goes in, of course, like I predicted. Oh, wait, oh, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, his Politoed's in there. I figure I can just go in, Thunder Wave this guy to slow him down, make him easier to kill later on. But he starts off with the Hidden Power, and I'm just holding my breath this whole time, like, please do not tell me that's Hidden Power Electric. Please do not tell it is Hidden Power Electric, my friends, and that is going to do a massive amount of damage. Thank goodness I have special defense EVs, or else that would have finished me off no problem at all there. But... I am able to get the Thunder Wave off, so I successfully slow down this Politoed. Gyarados did his job once so far, so I pull him out because he could be useful later to stop that Scizor with the Intimidate. And I go into my Dredagon, who will be able to resist mostly anything that Politoed wants to do. But he pulls his Politoed out, 
understandably, and goes into a scissor. So I'm figuring, okay then, I can just go for the thunder punch on the polytoad, but I hit the scissor instead. And as you can see, it does a lot of damage because that stab and with the sheer force as well. I didn't predict to switch to fortress. I just wanted to go for the fire punch on the scissor, but I happened to hit the fortress instead. So I mean, it works out. Even he's lucky because the rain, if the rain was to fall, then that fortress would have been taken out. So I mean, a little bit of a foolish move to go for a fire punch in the rain, but that was the strongest thing I had to hit scissor with. So that's why I went for it. I did not predict fortress, but it worked out well. Shouldn't carry two bug steals on your team. Anyway, so he goes into his lantern. I just go for the fire punch again, not wanting to over predict like a madman now the lantern does take it relatively well especially considering that it, actually no it doesn't if the rain wasn't falling that would have done a lot of damage but i stay in there because i know this lantern is not going to be able to one hit ko me since i am bulky and it's not a stab ice beam and i use this as a good opportunity to set up some stealth rocks but as you guys saw that ice beam was a critical hit so you see dragon is bulky man he dragon man that's what i'm talking about Ketzel from dragon tails anyway so i'm able to stay and go for the stealth rocks, set those up, and I pull Dragon out there because he could be useful later on to stop that fortress. And I go into my Escalvalier. Escalvalier is actually going to be pretty useful because he can resist the bolt beam combination. And well not resist the bolt, but resist the beam, which is important. And then I pretty much figure, okay, then I'll just stay in and take out something. But I hit this fortress, and I know he's going to probably want to set up something. So I figure, okay, just keep hitting him with the Mega Horns, and I'll take him down. But his fortress happens to be faster than a Scalavalier. So it's a little bit like, what? A Scalavalier is slower than Fortress? But it makes sense, though. So I'm able to take this fortress out, but not before he rapid spins my Stealth Rocks away. So, oh, well, I did get a good use out of them. But it's going to suck because he's bringing in somebody that I would really prefer to have Stealth Rocks on. His Dragonite. And here we go. The Hurricanes are going to start coming in. But... My Escalvalier is a bulky son of a gun, so I stay in there, and I know I can at least take a couple of hits from this Dragonite, and as you can see, look at the damage that Hurricane did. Stab, base 120, in the rain, this guy did not do too much damage at all. My Escalvalier is a bulky mother upper. So anyways, I stay in there, and I'm figuring, alright then, I'll knock off his item, but he wasn't carrying a life warp, so I'm like, well, well, whatever. I mean, at least I knocked something off, so I figure I'm going to be able to damage this guy decently enough until the game ends. I'm probably going to lose this war, but hey, man, I don't want anything switching into one of those hurricanes, because the critical hit ratio was high, and I have shell armor on my Escalvalier, so I'm not going to get critted. So I figure it was safer staying in with Escalvalier and absorbing those hurricanes while dealing damage to Dragonite to be able to revenge kill it later on while bringing something in safely, not taking a hurricane to the balls. So, Escalvalier goes down, but Escalvalier, you worked so hard for me. Guinevere, I really appreciate it. I call him Guinevere because it's a cool night name. I like it, but he goes into a sig. I go into my Sigalith now, and I figure I can call mine, resist, like, like, or at least call mine and get my special defense up and take a move. But he goes for the thunder, so I mean, it does a lot, but thankfully the Calm Mind is able to make me resist it to a certain amount, so I'm able, able to live in there, and I go for the Air Slash, take on his Dragonite, so that works out well, but I do not want to stay in here. He hits me. I try pulling my Bermuda out, and his Scissor comes in and is like, no. No. And so that sucks for me, but oh well, Bermuda, at least you did take down Dragonite, so no big deals. Anyways this point now he pulls out his scissor and understandably so because this scissor does not want to be in there with my Nidoqueen, queen especially since he most likely figure out that Nidoqueen queen does have a flamethrower even in the rain it's going to take down the scissor with no problem so i just go for the earth power neutral hit just to be able to take something down and i am able to successfully so things work out in that regard but i see this polytoad is probably going to go and go for the uh, hydro pump so I just say fuck it to stay in there with Drudagon so this way Drudagon can go down and then I can bring in my Weaver who is known as the sweeper of the team to be able to come through and clean up on that polytoad. I figured that he might want to switch here so I just go for the fake out just to get a little bit of extra damage and then I follow it up with the ice shard. I know I could have done a different move but I wasn't sure if he would switch or not and I just wanted to play it a little safe so that's what my mode of thinking was there. So now he goes back into a scissor obviously a problem I cannot deal with this thing right now especially with Weaver and I just go back into my Gyarados and as you guys know Gyarados will be able to intimidate stop or scissors attack not only that but resist the bullet punch as well so the bullet punch he goes for it but since I do have my leftovers I will be able to resist another bullet punch and go for the aqua teal and plus since it's stab and it's boosted by rain it's going to do a lot to scissors so he knows this pulls out goes into his lantern the aqua tail still comes through and my goodness it it, it, it deals a decent Im well no it doesn't <laughs> but hey man it, um, at least i got some damage off on the lantern but his leftovers are making it a little bit difficult to deal with him so i'm like okay then just stay in there because 
Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm gonna be extremely honest. I don't know why I stayed in with Gyarados at this point. I mean, I've watched this battle billions of times, but I just don't know why I stayed in with Gyarados. I guess I wanted to test to see what the Lantern would do, but it seemed a little bit foolish to me. I could have still used the Intimidate, but... Oh well, I mean, I guess everyone has their day when they make a really dumb move with the battle. This was definitely it. I don't know what in the world was going on. But anyways, my Gyarados does go down finally as my Aqua Tails will not be able to take this Lantern down. And I didn't even get that much damage off on him. But that's when I come back in with my Weavile, who is the cleanup of the team, catching Pokemon who are weakened and finishing them off with no problems at all. That Night Slash, even without the crit being taken into account, I still think it would have taken him out with one hit, so that is the uh, Lantern down. He goes back into a Scizor now. Of course I am not staying in there. He doesn't go for the su Pursuit, surprisingly enough, so whatever. Anyways, I go into my Nidoqueen, Queen, and I have Defense EVs and Max Special Attack, so I know I'm going to be able to resist at least two Bullet Punches to be able to stay alive long enough to be able to go for that Earth Power, and since Earth Power is a pretty strong stab move on Scizor and hits his special defensive side where he's weak. It's going to be able to deal enough damage to take him out of the game and his last Pokemon is this Cloyster. I have two Pokemon left, Nidoqueen and my Weavile. So at this point he Shell Smashes and I decide, whoa, he could have just gone for the attack there. Why didn't he go for the attack? He probably figured I would be faster and most likely I would have been unless he had speed investments in Cloyster. But Oh well, he goes for the Shell Smash here, but my Thunderbolt is easily going to be able to take him out. And since he doesn't carry the Focus Sash, he does carry the White Herd. It's going to be able to finish off his Cloister with no issues whatsoever, and that's the way the batch works out there, guys. Now, that ending was a little bit questionable, because why didn't this guy, you know, um, just go for the attack on Cloister? Well, here's where my process of thought was for that. If this Cloister had stayed in, right, and just gone for maybe an Ice School Spear or something like that, he... I don't know, I mean, I guess he would have probably left himself open for Weavile to come in and fake out, low kick him, but Cloyster has a lot of defense, so would Weavile have been able to clean up on the guy? I'm not exactly 100% sure, and that move was a little bit questionable, but whatever, I mean... The match worked out the way it did, and I still thought it was a damn good game, and it's one that I'm more than happy to bring to you guys, the Pikawu subscribers. Once again, Pikawu, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it, and I do hope that you guys enjoyed this narration as well. It's a little bit of an odd one, you know, some random black guy. Let's, it looks like Will Smith just giving you a Pokemon battle narration from Ground Zero, New York City. A little bit of a random package, but this is the stuff that we do on the Ethical World Network. This is what we are all about, bringing you quality and originality. With a little bit of a fun twist to it as well. So if you guys do feel my style, you feel the Article World Network, come on by and give us, uh, give us a subscription. I guarantee you, you'll definitely not regret it. But anyways, thank you all for having me here. Pikachu, thank you once again. I am Medica, representing the Article World Network, signing off. Take care of yourselves, and please have a good one.